Although the video I'm going to respond to is not particularly new, it's a good example of how wrong-headed young Earth creationism can be. The fact that people have paid good money to watch this on DVD boggles my mind. So hold on to your hats and try not to facepalm as much as I did when I first watched this offering by Kyle Butt. Before we get started, I would like to note that the title of his video indicates that doubt is a bad thing. I would like to point out that false certainty is a lot worse. Anyhow, take it away, Mr. Butt. When Adam was two seconds old, how old did Adam look? 25? 30? 35? But he was only two seconds old. He was placed in the Garden of Eden, and it was full of trees that could produce fruit almost immediately after they were created. As you can see, Mr. Butt is automatically assuming that his literal interpretation of Genesis is the only correct one. No room for poetic language or allegory here. If you had the opportunity to cut down a tree in the Garden of Eden, Assuming, of course, that there really was a literal Garden of Eden. And you counted the rings of that tree. How many rings would that tree have? A hundred? Two hundred? Three hundred? Who knows? But that tree would most likely look much older than two seconds old or three days old. How old would that tree be? Oh, that tree would be three days old, but it would look much older. So in order to be a young earth creationist, we need to assume that once upon a time mature trees were literally magically poofed into existence rather than the understanding that we currently have the trees only ever grow from seeds or cuttings. There is an idea called the idea of apparent age and that suggests to us that when God created everything he created things in a very mature state Adam was old enough to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth the fruit trees were old enough to bear fruit all stated as if it were established beyond any reasonable doubt this brand of religionist irritates me because they don't honestly describe what they believe they assert it as if it were all factually true. How old is the earth? You know, there are not many things that the creationist and the evolutionist agree on. In fact, there are very, very few. But one of the things upon which both the creationist and evolutionist agree is this. In order for evolution to have occurred, the earth must be multiplied billions of years old. That's what everybody agrees on. Is it the case that the earth is multiplied billions of years old? That's the time that you need for evolution to happen. Yes, indeed. Evolution requires long periods of time for major changes to occur. However, I feel the need to insert a little context here, because multiplied billions is kind of vague. So far as we know, life first appeared on this planet about 3.8 billion years ago, but it did not diversify into complex multicellular organisms until about half a billion years ago. 500 and something million. Creationists, like Mr. Butt, rarely represent the science accurately. Did you know that there are over 75 different ways to date the Earth? And over half of them give an age for the earth in just a few thousand or maybe just a few million years. Some of them give an age for the earth in just a few hundred years. And we know those aren't accurate, but they are all based on assumptions that are used by evolutionists. Wow, 75 different dating methods. That's a very specific claim with a stunning lack of detail. I also need to point out that evolutionists don't deal specifically with the age of the Earth. Evolution deals with the biological diversity of life. The scientists who figured out the age of the Earth are called geologists, Mr. Butt. You see, the evolutionist says, well, we can look at the Earth and we can see that it's multiplied millions of years old. It just looks so old. Oh, come on. People who argue that the Earth is old usually have reasons to back it up. It looks so old compared to what? How would you know what a young earth looked like? 
And how old did the earth look when it was created just two seconds after its creation? Those are all very good questions. They're not very good questions if they assume that the earth was created without demonstrating that it could not have come into being via some natural process. It's a lot harder to figure something out if you don't assume your conclusions at the outset. But there's a greater chance that you will arrive at a correct conclusion. But the evolutionist says, well, we can prove the earth is multiplied millions or billions of years old. We have all of these dating methods, and we can date the rocks, and we can date those fossils by those rocks, and we can prove that the earth is millions of years old, and it gives us plenty of time for evolution. I'm sorry, but you cannot. The evolutionist cannot prove the earth is multiplied millions of years old. And I'm going to show you several reasons why. Okay. Let's hear it then, Mr. Butt. Does it surprise you that according to the evolutionary time frame, that the age of the earth in the universe doubles about every all 20 to 40 years? Doubles every 20 to 40 years? Really? You see, when Charles Darwin came out with his idea in 1859 of evolution, people looked at the earth and they said, oh, it must be maybe somewhere around 200 million years old. And they would suggest that they had dating methods that prove that. And from 1859 until now, we have increased that from 200 million years or so to 4.6 billion years. Geologists and other scientists have been estimating the age of the Earth since before Darwin. As technology has improved, so has the accuracy of the age estimates. And all along the way, evolutionists has, have said, well, we've got a dating method that proves this number, and we've got a dating method that proves that number, and now we've got a dating method that proves 4.6 billion, uh, supposedly. When it doubles to uh, 9.2 billion, are we going to have dating methods that supposedly prove that the Earth is 9.2 billion years old? Oh, I'm sure there will be some. This is ridiculous. Scientists have known that the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old since the 1950s. That's 60 years between you and me, Mr. Butt. But... Yes? But... Yes? But... Get on with it. But... What will that say about all the dating methods that they have suggested that prove the other dates? Well, it would suggest that all of those were false dating methods. Not necessarily. Scientific dating methods give estimates which usually indicate a minimum or maximum age. For example, dendrochronologists who study tree growth rings have an unbroken record which demonstrates that trees have been doing their thing for at least 11,000 years. That's 5,000 years older than Mr. Butt thinks the Earth and the entire universe is. And that's what I think we can show in this particular lesson. Like I said, 75 different ways to date the Earth, many of them giving us a young age for the Earth. The unanswered question here is whether all of these unspecified dating methods would withstand scientific scrutiny. Let's just look at one of those ideas. Henry Morris from the Creation Research Institute or, or the Institute for Creation Research, ICR, has suggested to us an idea known as population statistics. Okay, so are we going to hear about birth rates, death rates, diseases, famines, modern medicines and technology? Population statistics are simply dealing with how long humans have been on the earth. Oh, silly me. I thought there was more to it than that. Supposedly, humans in one shape, form, or fashion, according to the evolutionary time frame, have been on the earth for about three to five million years. You what? Humans? Mr. Butt, why are you teaching your paying followers such inaccurate information about science? Humans have been around for less than a quarter of a million years. That's Homo sapiens, like you and me. Before that, our earlier ancestors were still hominids and apes, but we wouldn't describe them as humans. We share a common ancestor with our closest living relatives of a different species, the chimpanzees, 
about six or seven million years ago. This relationship was figured out in Darwin's time, many decades before anyone knew what a gene was. Since then, the study of genetics has confirmed the reality of that hypothesis, that we really are distant cousins. Now, we're going to be very conservative, and we're going to say that humans have been on the earth only for about one million years, uh, according to the evolutionary time frame. And we're going to suppose that a generation, the time that a new generation appears, is about 42 years. Okay, so far, both of those estimates are highly questionable. Ironically, they're both too high. Most women have children before they are 42. Therefore, the time between generations is more likely to be in the low 20s. We don't have to go far back in history to get to a time when the average human lifespan was 42 years. Surely a young Earth creationist wouldn't confuse lifespan with generation length, would they? And we're going to be very, very conservative and say there is a population growth rate of only 2.4. Uh, 2.4 is a tiny growth rate. That's that each pair of, of people have 2.4 children. They would have to have two to keep the population the same. The 0.4 is a tiny increase. Oh boy. The real figure for zero population growth is more like 2.1. And since when did human societies neatly divide into pairs who all had children? What about all those who didn't or couldn't reproduce? But hey, let's see where this is going. Do you know that if people had been on the earth for just one million years, with a generation being 42 years and a growth rate of 2.4% or 2.4 children, that now, even counting wars and famines and plagues and pestilences, there would be one times ten to the five thousandth people in the universe, uh, on the earth rather. Do you know how many people that the entire universe could hold? This is ridiculous. Who, apart from young earth creationists who like to erect straw men, is proposing that human population growth rates have remained the same, even within recorded history. Look at this graph, Mr. Butt, and try to learn something new. The entire universe at 20 billion light years estimation could only hold 1 times 10 to the 100 people if you packed a person in every single part of the universe. Let me stop you there for a second, Mr. Butt. You just said that the universe is 20 billion light years across. That's an estimate, at least within the ballpark of current scientific estimates. The most recent estimates are about four times that, but it gets complicated due to what we can see now and the continuing expansion of the universe. But the thing is that we can see galaxies which are billions of light years away from us. Given the fact that light travels at only 186,000 miles per second, how is it that we can see them at all? If the universe really was only 6,000 years old, we shouldn't even be able to see a tenth the way across our own galaxy. As for the idea that a so-called evolutionary timescale would equate to a human population more than filling up the universe with biomass, I'm not even going to dignify that with anything more than ridicule. And yet, we are supposed to believe that humans have been here for 3.5 mil 3 to 5 million years? No, Mr. Butt, you're not supposed to believe anything. You're supposed to put more effort into understanding the science properly, especially if you're charging people to watch this stuff. Did you know if you put humans on this earth about 6,000 years ago, and you keep, keep those same parameters with the generation at 42 years, with the 2.4 children growth rate, that you get a number of about 4.34 billion, very close to our 6 billion? Well, how is that? That's because Dr. Morris assumed his conclusion before he plugged in his made-up numbers. It's also worth noting that in the eight years since the video I'm responding to was recorded, the global human population has grown 
to 7.3 billion. But that's another topic. How is it that we can show humans have not been on this earth for multiplied millions of years, even for three or four, even for one million, but only they have been here for just a few thousand? Mr. Butt, you haven't shown anything apart from your ignorance of science, population dynamics, and statistical analysis. I hope that there are young Earth creationists watching this. If you are one, you need to know that this guy, and others like him, are selling you a bunch of crap, to put it politely. For the record, I'm not making an argument for atheism. I'm promoting scientific literacy. Don't let snake oil salesmen persuade you that evolution and atheism are the same thing. Do what the Kyle Butts of this world don't encourage you to do. Research widely and fact-check the claims being made, including anything you hear from me.